checked that bag, like, oh my God. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and I created Dolled Up by Jay. So in today's video, we are going to be discussing quiet luxury, aka coded luxury, and the popularity of this old money aesthetic I've seen just trending all over like Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and all about this type of other aesthetic. I know that the very like Y2K inspired fashion has been so popular all over social media. So I am a little bit relieved to see kind of like this other aesthetic trending a little bit. Perhaps it is just a subculture. Perhaps it is a certain type of person that is dressing like this, but I thought it'd be interesting just to discuss anyways. If you are new here, I post new fashion content every single week. So if you enjoy discussing fashion and appreciating it in its art form, and also sometimes the occasional horrible hideous items, then definitely subscribe, you're gonna enjoy my channel. Also, this video was inspired by Charles Gross. He is on TikTok. I love him. He is so soft-spoken. He is so elegant. Many of his videos that have gone viral are about Hermes and the shopping experience and counterfeiting and, you know, luxury brands and crazy prices. And he's just very interesting to watch. That's what inspired this video and where I got the term coded luxury from. He said in a video, the quote, money talks and wealth whispers. I thought that was really interesting, especially in the world of local mania. Now, I'm not not saying there's anything wrong with wanting to wear your favorite designer logos all over your body or wherever. I like a logo moment here and there when it's appropriate, sometimes in the form of a t-shirt, sometimes in the form of shoes, you know what I mean? But I think that it all has a time and place and I thought it would just be interesting to sit down and discuss like this quiet luxury. He referenced in one of his TikToks uh, comparing Succession's wardrobe, the HBO hit series about like the billionaire media mogul family with Dynasty. That's a Netflix series, really, really hot watch, by the way, if you just want some like kind of like filthy drama nonstop. They live in like a beautiful mansion. In Dynasty, they basically are like also billionaire family. They wear definitely more like in your face outlandish outfits. If we compare the outfits with Dynasty and Succession briefly, it's totally true. So many of the outfits in Succession are very much kind of minimalist, muted neutrals. There's not really a lot of crazy colors going on. There's not a lot of crazy prints. We're not going to see any Gucci GGs on anyone. There's no monograms happening at all. A lot of the bags, I usually can't even really tell like what they are. And I mean, I have no doubt the wardrobing on this show has probably not spared any expenses because this is supposed to be a billionaire family. They need to look the part, right? Dynasty, I find the clothing, some of it, I'm like, okay, it's a bit much, but I do really enjoy a lot of it, especially Fallon's outfits where they're just like, they're tailored like boss bitch outfits, but then you can tell like she's wearing like a beautiful Gucci blouse with like a matching jacket or like a nice cinched belt. I love uh, Dominique, the most recent season, she had this head to toe Dolce Gabbana patchwork outfit on. Oh my goodness. Now, however you feel about Dolce Gabbana, I know it's a bit of like a somewhat controversial brand nowadays. Is it still? I'm not sure. Comment below, let me know your thoughts on Dolce Gabbana. But however you feel about the brand, I really love that outfit. I found it to be so, so, so fun. That's just to give you kind of an idea of quiet luxury versus logo mania, more like loud luxury to say, comparing these two shows to give you some visual examples. Now, some brands that are associated with the notion of quiet luxury would be, I would say like Brunello Cuccinelli. It's an Italian brand. Everything I believe is handmade. And he apparently employs like an entire town in Italy. So it's all made by like these artisans. So the price definitely reflects that. And they do use some of the highest quality materials in the world. For example, you get like a blazer, I think between like three and $5,000. Sweaters are at least 2,000. I saw one on sale once and it was such a cool sweater. It said something about like never give up on your your imagination or something it was something way less cheesy than that and i went into the vancouver boutique and it was like 1700 dollars on sale i was like okay never mind no 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 no. that's for a quote no that's too much so brunello cuccinelli definitely is up there they have some beautiful timeless styles very much like light beiges they have linens they're really about their woven sweaters really really super supple soft stuff they even have like children's clothing for the uber wealthy and uh that's a really interesting brand 
because not much of it is really branded at all. It's one of those things where it's like, if you know, you know, and that's where a lot of the focus of this video is. Also some examples of this in brands as well. I mean, Tom Ford, I'm not saying that his styles are understated and muted, Quiet luxury doesn't have to be muted neutrals just seen in succession, but it's basically the absence of flashy logos. And uh, a lot of the Tom Ford shoes, like you're not gonna see logos on them either. There's certain items in the brand where you know it's Tom Ford, like the padlock shoes. Yes, the bags say TF, but a lot of the clothing, you're never gonna know it's Tom Ford. There's no Tom Ford logo items that I've ever seen personally. Like the brand just doesn't do it. To contrast, good brands like Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, you know, very loud in your face, even Dior. I love Dior and there's really nothing wrong with liking logos, but Dior monogram, the oblique print is like, people are wearing that decked out like head to toe, you know? So it's just completely two different worlds. Also, Laurel Piana has really taken the luxury world by storm, I've noticed in the last few years. There's a lot of typical kind of old money vibes and videos online saying brands you only know about if you're wealthy or brands only rich people know about. That's not necessarily true. I think anyone from any background can know about any of these brands, whatever your budget is and have an appreciation for fashion. But there is definitely a market of people out there who, as one of my friends and subscribers put it, expensive overpriced basics is basically quiet luxury yes you could argue that however some people are happy to pay 500 plus dollars on a designer t-shirt with a logo on it i have been that person as well i mean there's nothing wrong with it to each their own some people are happy to pay 500 dollars for a premium cotton t-shirt with no branding on it other than on the inside tag but that's going to be exquisite quality as well there's definitely markets for both i don't think there is a right or a wrong at all i think it's really interesting to discuss you know like laura piana it's nothing on it has logos nothing on it is branded the shoes everything sweaters again gonna be like 2500 to 3000 dollars the shoes are like 1100 i think maybe 900 us sorry i always think in canadian dollars the coats absolutely exquisite 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 i went into the laura piana in milan oh my lord the fabrics the materials absolutely exquisite some strikingly beautiful deep pea green coats, blueberry blues, stunning shearling, just, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And you wouldn't know what brand it was unless you knew about the Laura Piana collection of that season or kind of had an eye for that type of detail. But there is a massive luxury market for people that don't care that there's not a logo on something and they just like it, you know what I mean? Before Logomania was really that popular, the main way people really expressed themselves if they wanted designer recognition was through bags. That's why in the early 2000s, like the Louis Vuitton monogram print was so, so, so popular. It still is today, but it really was having a moment. Like the Louis Vuitton Speedy and associated bags were so, so popular, you know, they had it in like white with the colorful print that was so popular. They did it in black multicolor, very like early 2000s vibes, right? Beauty bag I know is a classic. It has like a super, super cult following. It hasn't been in my opinion as an it bag as much as you could say for about, you know, the Bottega Veneta Jody bag on every single blogger's feed the last summer, but they are releasing new denim versions, which is interesting. So again, logo mania there, right? Other brands that I would consider to be more like quiet luxury you know victoria beckham very very kind of neutral styles there's no logos on any of her clothes that i know of that i've looked at the row definitely no logomania oh my gosh like you would not even find that at all and then also for bags i mean i think it's interesting to think about what bags lack any logos i would want to say bottega definitely lacks logos but their designs are just so loud and proud you know it's a Bottega bag. Maybe you don't, but I think a lot of people interested in my channel or watching my channel would be able to spot a Bottega bag very easily because we're fashion enthusiasts. The average person who's not really up to date with fashion and you know what designers are creating, you might not recognize a Bottega banana bag unless you, you know, saw a lot of ads or saw it tagged on social media, whatever, because they don't have a logo on a lot of their bags with the exception of the cassette bag has kind of that signature triangle accent that they do in belts as well but that's really been the only like defining Bottega Veneta logo that I've really come across I don't even know if it's considered a logo or if it's an accent you guys decide
kind of similar with Celine as well, I would say. Celine bags are a little bit more muted, except for the Phantom, and I love that bag so much. That is one of the most beautiful bags of all time, in my opinion. I love it so much. That only has Celine embossed on the leather very subtly. It's not super in your face. It's not super loud. You know, the opposite of that Dior behind me, like this bag has a massive CD on it right there. And then the other ones is Christian Dior with the Dior dangling. So it's like, there's no question about which brand it is, right? Other brands where you don't really know what the bag is. There's a brand called Devolo or Devolux or something like that. And apparently their bags are like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And like, they're not the nicest in my opinion, but apparently they have a really huge following in Asia. That is a very, very high priced brand. And I remember that was in Nordstrom in Canada and like no one was ever in that section of the store, but it's still there today. Like they're still able to pay their rent. So I don't really know the history of that bag, but it really has like a lack of logos. I think I incorporate both parts of it into my wardrobe, but I tend to err on like a little bit of the more like quiet-ish side. I think both can be pulled off again in great ways. I just think with the logo mania vibe and the whole like streetwear designer, like in your face vibe, you need to be careful with what you pair things with. And also when designer logos are on items such as belts, shoes, bags, Sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out, okay, I'm wearing shoes that say Dior, but then I'm gonna wear a Fendi belt, but then my bag is a different designer. Like, is that a faux pas? Is that a faux pas? Because I do that sometimes. Like, sorry, I don't own bag, shoe, belt combo from every single designer out there. No, I buy what I like and I piece it together as I like in a similar color scheme as I see fit. I don't always get it right, perhaps. No one's perfect. But I think that it is interesting, you know, that discussion. So I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about that. I don't want to get this to be like too rambly. It's definitely been a movement of like, kind of like old money, stylish, classy aesthetics. So like, what does that entail basically? It's like, you basically see a lot of like neutrals. You see a lot of, you know, turtlenecks and you see a lot of equestrian wear and things that are associated with like more like upper socioeconomic status per se. You can also get this look if you're on a budget, you know, you can find like beautiful wool sweaters that are on sale in department stores. You can shop them on e-commerce sites as well. And there's maybe brands that have soft sweaters that don't need to be, you know, cashmere $500 that you can still get a nice look that way. The old money kind of quiet luxury vibe is interesting. I think the focus more for this video that I got into on this tangent was you know examples of the two again i don't think one is really right or wrong i think that you should wear whatever makes you happy and yeah one day if you want to wear a full fendi monogram outfit fur boots and the next day you want to wear a wool blend skirt suit with you know pearl buttons and a chanel bag and shoes to match or you know something that kind of looks like similar to that vibe doesn't need to be designer then like go for it because fashion is so fun oh a last example i find interesting is at the airport i noticed so much coming back to dubai i don't know if it was just the flight i was on or because i'm going back to dubai but like i have never seen so many louis vuitton people uh carry-ons in my life it was like every guy in business class on the plane had a Louis Vuitton key ball in different colors. It was like a uniform. It was so funny. But then I'm like, okay, well, I have my Gucci one. So I was like, at least I don't have like what everybody has, but also like that's such a classic bag. And I understand like if you're going to use it, it's the best time to use it is at the airport, right? It makes sense. And also on the other side of that, the quiet luxury version, you know, between the key balls and also even the Louis Vuitton uh, carry-on luggage, which is very popular as well. I've seen someone checked that came on the conveyor belt. I was like, seriously, checked that bag? Like, oh my God, that is risky. On the other side of that, in the quiet luxury spectrum is, I would say like Ramoa luggage or even like Tumi luggage. Ramoa has become like quite more popular, I would say, but I find Tumi to be like very similar. I really enjoy my Tumi luggage. I just like how it has like a lot more different finish options and like a matte black, which is like super badass. Ramoa, as you can spot from a mile away, they do really lack logos aside from I think a small one in the upper corner. You can spot them from a mile away. They are the aluminum steel cases and they're not super brand heavy unless there is like a designer collaboration. So Rumoa and Dior had a collab. 
Off White has some luggage now. I'm not sure with who. I think they have done a collab. It's just interesting to see this new era of like designer luggage collaborations. So I think that's interesting as well. The world of like, you know, luxury luggage and when you're at the airport, like now that I'm noticing it more, I find it really interesting because I never used to give a crap about suitcases at all, like at all. And then I got like my nice luggage and I was like, like I always feel a little bit like slick <laughs> rolling into the airport. <laughs> uh, I also personally wouldn't want a really branded uh, luggage set that I'm checking because just for safety reasons, expensive outside usually means expensive inside for luggage, right? And like, especially anything super monogrammed, I wouldn't want either because I just wouldn't want to look like I draw too much attention at the airport. I think my Gucci double, when I do use it, is more than enough for me. Definitely, uh, it's not small. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this video interesting. I kind of like wrote a script and also freestyled it. In these discussion videos, I like to jot down a lot of points ahead of time then read them a few times before I talk in front of you. And then other times I literally just freestyle it. So it was a combination of both. I hope that it will come out to be an interesting topic for you. If you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so, so, so much. I love to see you back here on my channel and I hope that everyone is doing fabulous. See you in the next video, bye.